down to the any other business. That's the way it is, folks. You get about 30 seconds each for uh, unanswered talk about anything at all that's happened in the world. And uh, I'm going to start with Greg. This is it. Come on, Greg. Got to have it. Yeah, I, I'm sure this happens worldwide, that actors and famous people get degrees from universities, even though they don't necessarily yeah. deserve them. Well, the Indiana Jones film, thank you for that. The, I, oh, keep oh, coming. Did the you Indiana, say the Jones Indiana Jones film Jones? opens up next week in, in the United States. Indiana Jones Where and the it? Kingdom of Crystal Skull. Because as, as it, movie goers know, the demand for wait, another wait, Indiana Jones over wait. the last 19 years has just gripped the movie going world. And Harrison Ford's only 63. But Harrison Ford somewhere. has been elected to the Boston based Archaeological Institute of America's Board of Directors. Why? Well, they think he's promoted archaeology, they think he's made it cool. And I've met some archaeologists before, and none of them are nearly as strapping or as interesting as the uh, as the uh, swashbuckling Indiana Jones. I can't believe if you told a woman that you're an archaeologist, you've got a better chance of getting her into bed. But apparently, Harrison Ford has helped make archaeology cool, and he's on the board of directors. And I will go see this film next weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's well here done, somewhere. Greg, for getting through that with you doing every sound effect on the box. I, I put it on the box expressly. I thought to myself, <laughs> I've got to put on the theme tune to Indiana Jones because the film's coming out. It's not easy to beat the box. <laughs> right. When the, when, the box, when the box comes at you, it's hard to win. No, it's not here. I can't find it. Anyway, <laughs> Thank God he wasn't in charge of your rocket, Greg, because yeah. you'd be I on know, the way yeah. to Mars well, or I'm something. I'm not sure he now. wasn't. Did you score that, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good stuff. He's, he's, he's done very well. What was the answer like? Uh, average. It's average. Okay, thanks very much. Oh, uh, Bob, any other business? Um, Bob from Muswell Hill, he's in... Uh, you want to have a go, Bob? Yes, I got three. The Bill, Psycho, <laughs> and Different Strokes. <laughs> <laughs> in your competition, guess the theme tune. I want to make an appeal, ladies and gentlemen... To, to celebrities that have past gone past their prime, that are just that are just uh, flopping around the edges of the of the great sea of celebrity, yeah. when you stop us outside uh, things at the Grosvenor House, by all means come up to us and say, oh, "Excuse me, can I have your autograph?" and we'll sign them. And by all means say, "Sorry, can I take a picture?" Yeah, but don't say so loudly in our presence. <laughs> Who was it? Because <laughs> <laughs> we are human. If you cut us, we do bleed. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, Des Kelly, any other business? Quick one. Glimpse into the world of how broadcasting works. And the presenter James Well, experienced guy, got sacked for urging voters to get rid of Ken Livingston. Sorry. Hardly controversial. However, a whole raft of reality shows, mostly featuring Anton Deck, it has to be said, robbed the paying public of 7.8 <laughs> million quid. And nobody's been sacked. Nobody has been sacked. Now, if that happened in any other walk of life, you'd be doing time for fiddling. That's an embezzlement on a grand scale. Somebody must be responsible, and I think uh, it should roll. And, and uh, I mean, it's less than what they would have made off They it. made a £2.1 million profit, because their ITV fined them 57 yeah. So, well done, lads. Carry oh, on. Good yeah. job. Good, good, yeah, let's do that from now mm. on. Uh, John? I I'm going to put a serious hat on here, I'm afraid. Uh, the, Ra the Rangers fans who went down to Manchester on Thursday. <laughs> I thought it was just despicable <laughs> how they behaved. Uh, it took it ta it's taken football fans back 30 years in this country. We thought we'd gone away from all that sort of stuff, and there and, and there and there we are seeing seeing them wrecking Manchester City Centre. And you know, if that if that copper, what's he called, Mick Regan, yeah. if he'd lost his life, yeah. then somebody there would have had murder on their hands. And whoever <laughs> whoever the guy is, the Rangers fan out there, a squaddy apparently, who went out there and rescued that guy, he deserves a medal. And, and it has to be said as well, the vast majority of those fans, you got me, there's 100 113,000 of them in Manchester and a couple of thousand of them fighting. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still... No, I'm just saying that the yeah. majority of them, I agree majority with everything you say, yeah. but the majority the of them... The guys, the, guys in, the guys in the stadium, they all behave themselves. Yeah. It's yeah. the people who are on the streets They're with so much booze in them. Exactly. Final scores on the fighting talk today. Well, he could have been in the final if he had got the question the right way round. His ISDN hadn't have broken. He hadn't had one of the worst mornings ever since Bill Murray and Groundhog day but in last place with 41 points <laughs> is Greg Brady star as always yeah you keep clapping Des you're in third place with 43 <laughs> <laughs> it was a sarcastic clap I wasn't clapping sarcastically I was genuine <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so I won't do that again. Bob's 44, John's 46. That's your final and fighting talk today. 20 seconds. You've got to defend the indefensible. No matter what I say, John, do you want to go first or do you want to go second? No, I'll let the big man go. OK, Bob, this is a very simple question for you. I'd rather go and watch the Sex in the City film with my wife than watch the FA Cup final between Cardiff and Portsmouth. Well, I think you're going to get more passion in sex in the city. I don't think you'll get quite as much sex, because I think when you've got Robbie Fowler, Jimmy Floyd has about beautiful, fine figures of men, there is more likely to be an outbreak of sex at Wembley than there will be in the film. But you will see just as many old women who should know better trying to perform athletically. That will be at the cinema and it will be at Wembley. And, of course, I would rather go and watch it. Ah, very good, John. So you've got to beat. I was disappointed to learn that Dwayne Chambers was only on seven prohibited substances. Right now, I'm on nine. I am. <laughs> I, I, I always, always juice myself up to get on this programme because, let's admit it, the only way to perform at the elite level is to get a whole lot of drugs inside you. So whatever sport you may be contemplating, taking part in this afternoon, Wembley, wherever, get some drugs in you. That's the way ahead. And if Dwayne Chambers had had more, it had had an Olympic goal. Oh, man. oh, it's the best defender in the best of the season. John Rowling's from the heart, today. That one. Juice that. <laughs> oh, dear. It no, explains a lot, you know. I'd like to thank all, all four of you. For me, the best fighting talk of the season, that. So well done, everyone. Uh, that's it for today. I'll see you next. Oh, hold on. I've just remembered who got the bronze at the Sony Awards during the week. You know, radio's equivalent of the Oscars, you know, when we won silver. Uh, it was a friends at Five Live Sport oh. who are up next. They they won bronze. Just to put that into perspective, the great Carl Lewis won silver at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul at the 200 metres. Uh, the bronze went to Robson de Silva. Remember him? No, no, nobody <laughs> remembers him. A Brazilian? Anyone? Uh, no. Uh, okay. Never. Uh, that's what Wiki's for. Have a good show, guys. Make sure it's pure bronze. More silver. 11 a.m. next Saturday. <laughs>